Now this is a picture of testicles of rats. On the left, they were fed non-GMO soy. On the right, they were fed GMO soy. So the GMO soy changed the testicles of livers from pink to blue. And I always like to take a long, slow drink of water at this point. You see, the, the, the gender that's most sensitive to food issues are women. So I like to leave this up a little longer so that the guys can catch up. <laughs> Mice fed GM soy had damage to their testicles, including damaged young sperm cells. Rats fed GM soy. The females had changes in the uterus, ovaries, and hormone balance. I spoke at the European Parliament one year, many years ago. And there were some several scientists speaking at the same time, including Dr. Irina Ermakova, a senior researcher at the Russian Academy of Sciences. She gave me these slides, so these are Russian-speaking rats. <clears throat> and they volunteered for an experiment with GM soy. And these female rats were fed GM soy starting two weeks before they got pregnant and continued to eat the GM soy. And more than half of their babies died within three weeks compared to a 10% death rate among rats that were fed non-GM soy. The rats were also smaller and could not reproduce. Another Russian Academy of Sciences scientist did experiments with hamsters, fed for two years, over a third generation. They were un they, most were infertile. They suffered slower growth, a four to five fold increase in, in uh, infant mortality, and many had a, de a defect of hair growing in their mouths. There was a study done by Dr. Seralini. How many people have seen this slide before? <clears throat> it's quite famous. Dr. Seralini is a toxicologist from France, and he was the person who was advising the French government as a member of two committees, and even the European Union, on GMO submissions. And he realized that although Monsanto and their minions claimed that the rats had no damage as a result of being exposed to their corn, for example, he was seeing signs of toxicity that were being ignored and was able to publish a study showing that three of Monsanto corn varieties were causing signs of toxicity. So he took the corn variety that had the highest level of toxicity or the highest level of statistically significant differences, Roundup Ready corn, and secretly did a study for two years. Secretly because Monsanto always tries to disrupt things. So he secretly did a study for two years and do it to, to see if the Roundup Ready corn had a problem. No one had done a study like that. There were no published protocols. So we followed at the very least, the protocols that Monsanto used to get their products approved. The same number in the experimental group, the same number of controls, the same rats. And after two years, well, first of all, Monsanto does their research for only 90 days. He was doing it for two years. In the next month after 90 days, one of the, one of the rats started to develop tumors. And by the end of two years, Many had multiple massive tumors. When they hit 25% of body weight, they had to be killed as part of the laboratory policy. So you can see the huge tumors in these rats. They also died prematurely. They also had damaged organs, liver, kidneys, pituitary, and in some cases, hormonal imbalance. Now, he wanted to find out whether it was the Roundup or the, or the corn or the combination that caused the problem. So one of the experimental groups just ate Roundup Ready corn that was never sprayed with Roundup. Another group was fed the Roundup Ready corn that had been sprayed. And a third group <coughs> was fed the Roundup without the corn. These are the three groups, all three groups, multiple massive tumors, early death, and organ damage. This means, <clears throat> this means that alone and in combination, it's the process of genetic engineering, it's the Roundup, 
and, the, and together cause these problems. Now, this was the most in-depth research study to date on GMO health. And it showed massive damage. This alone should have signaled an alarm around the world. But the biotech industry has a program called Let Nothing Go. They have people in high places around the world. They have people who have front groups that basically get paid by Monsanto to pretend that they're independent. They have people in, in editorial positions. And when this came out, within 24 hours, everyone was sent a bunch of talking points. And they all said the same thing. They used the wrong rats. Well, those are the same rats that Monsanto used. They had the, their control group was too small. It was the same size that Monsanto used. But they kept saying it louder and louder, and then at a certain point, the, the talking points shifted, as they always do, to say, there's a consensus. Who's the consensus among? Those that are reading the talking points. So this was circulated to governments and media, so this information was suppressed. Now, it also turns out that the editor of this paper was being pressured and attacked by Monsanto's minions. And then Monsanto hired the editor and paid him $400 an hour for some project. And then soon after, the editor retracted this paper and said in his letter, it's retracted because of these reasons. Now, there are published manuals as to why papers need to be retracted, and his reasons are never used. For example, inconclusive. And someone analyzed the other papers published in his journal, and one-third of them would have to be removed according to that criteria. So then he scrambled and said, oh, actually, it's because it wasn't a proper cancer study. You need more rats for a cancer study. It's true. If it were a cancer study, you'd need more rats. But nowhere in the write-up of the study did they use the word cancer. It was a toxicological study, and they found tumors, much to their surprise. So the guy was obviously scrambling for some justification. Hundreds of scientists wrote, condemning this action, and the guy was kicked out of the journal. Another journal immediately published it, did another peer review. It actually got past three peer reviews. Now, one of the arguments used by the biotech industry was that the Sprague Dolly rats that are pictured here get tumors anyway. That's what they're used for, cancer studies. And they said, see, in our cancer studies, about 80% of the rats get cancer. Your experimental group had 80 or 90%, but your controls only had maybe 10%. So we're not going to even pay attention to your controls done in a well-controlled experiment because they were supposed to have gotten cancer. We don't know why they didn't get cancer. They were supposed to have gotten cancer. So we're going to compare your experimental group to our controls over here, which is not scientific. So, Seralini's team did something brilliant. They took rat chow from around the world and tested it. This is the rat chow they use on rat and mice ex and on rat experiments around the world for the controls. And the rat chow was filled with GMOs and Roundup. And if the control groups in these rat experiments all around the world are getting cancer at 80%, and his experimental group that was fed GMOs and Roundup got 80%, no wonder. He used organic, non-sprayed control material for his control group. And only 10% or so got cancer. So all of the research done on GMOs by the biotech industry compares animals that have been fed GMOs and probably Roundup to other animals that have been fed GMOs and Roundup. And still they find problems because the percentage is high. And what do they do with those problems? They try to explain them away. Now, I interviewed Dr. Seralini, who had been attacked 
by scientists for years. He actually won a libel case against them and extracted his penalty. He asked the courts to, to rule in his favor, and they did. He said, I want one euro. So he got paid one euro. There was also a forgery case against one of his detractors. Someone had apparently or allegedly signed someone else's signature to a letter to condemn Seralini. It turns out he was the group that found that glyphosate alone is just one of many, many toxins in Roundup. But Roundup can be 125 times more toxic. But the EPA only requires Monsanto to submit tests on glyphosate alone. And not only glyphosate alone, but a version of glyphosate that's not even used in their formulation. They use glyphosate salts, which are much more toxic, but they have to do studies on glyphosate technical. So they use the wrong substance to test. They use it in isolation, which it's never applied in isolation. Its toxicity is enhanced by the formulation. And yet, this is what our regulatory agencies are doing. Seralini not only has been the lead tester of GMOs and Roundup, but he actually tested a product, several products of herbs, aromatic herbs, for detoxification and found, for example, one product that helped the body detoxify, the body of rats detoxify the glyphosate. And he said, this tells us we can use aromatic herbs just like they suggested in indigenous people take uh, these aromatic herbs and put them on warm food at the end of cooking and then eat it with the food and it'll detoxify. But he found that if you put six herbs, then the cells will detoxify the aromatic herbs instead of the glyphosate. But if you put three, then it was actually successful. So not to overload the system with too many herbs. Josh Axe talked about how Roundup and GMOs affect people differently, talking about the body types, the Ayurvedic body types and the Chinese body types, and how the gut and the liver are the starting points for the treatment of people exposed to GMOs and Roundup. So now I'm going to go through some of the charts which show a correlation between the use of glyphosate-based herbicides on GMO soy and corn, or the acreage of GMO soy and corn, or both, with specific diseases. Now, it's important to note that these are correlations. Just because they move together does not mean that Roundup causes the disease. This is inflammatory bowel disease correlated with glyphosate sprayed herbicides on GMO soy and corn. You can see a very tight control. The, the, the uh, number is 0.9378. If it were a perfect line, exactly it would be a one. So it was a pretty close correlation. But on this basis alone, we can never say that A causes B. But when you understand that when people stop exposing themselves to glyphosate and GMOs, and 85% of those who reported to us get better from digestive conditions like inflammatory bowel disease, and pig farmers say that when they take their animals off of the Roundup Ready soy, they, have, they get rid of the diarrhea and their digestive problems. Same with the intractable diarrhea of pets, as described to me by veterinarians. And when you have plausible causative pathways about how glyphosate can cause gaps in the walls of the intestines and change the gut bacteria and damage the internal microvilli, etc., etc., when you have all of these together, then this data, these data are quite supportive and important as part of the bigger picture. Having said that, I'm now going to share with you many slides, many diseases. And I want you to just look at these, at these, um, whoops, trying to hit the, uh, here we go. Just, I can't get the, uh, here we are. Just look at this slope here. 
Just look at the slope to see the correlation. I'll read the name of the disease. So you can focus on that so we can go through these quickly. This is inflammatory, inflammatory bowel disease. This is deaths due to intestinal infection. Peritonitis, an inflammatory disease of the digestive tract. This is liver and bile duct cancer. Kidney and pelvic cancer. Urinary and bladder cancer. Thyroid cancer. Deaths, to ac deaths due to acute myeloid leukemia. Kidney failure and death. Kidney injury. Hepatitis C. Autism in six-year-olds. This is a 0.9972 correlation. And this is comparing glyphosate, uh, glyphosate as applied over four years total. So it showed an accumulation of glyphosate exposure to our food supply, which made the correlation even tighter. Diabetes. I can't read that. What does it say? Stroke. stroke. Deaths due to stroke. Dementia. Senile dementia deaths. Alzheimer deaths. Deaths from Parkinson's disease. Deaths due to obesity. Deaths due to high blood pressure. Anemia. Insomnia. Sleep disorders. Celiac disease. Birth defects, congenital birth defects. Disorders, deaths due to disorders of lipoprotein metabolism. Anxiety. Suicide by overdose. Schizophrenia. ADHD. So these diseases are very serious. I believe that they are exacerbated and possibly created for some individuals from GMOs and Roundup. And I base that on some of the evidence we've shared today. And we could spend a week meeting each day and looking at one disease and say, okay, what could possibly cause insomnia or sleep disorders from GMOs and Roundup? Well, earlier in the conversation, we talked about the shikimate pathway producing serotonin. Serotonin leads to melatonin. Melatonin governs our circadian rhythms and sleep. Serotonin is also produced by cells along the gut wall by interacting with the microbiome, with the gut bacteria. If we damage the gut bacteria, they may not function well to produce the serotonin. So those are some examples of how we can break it down to what we've already seen. And there's some people who are taking the biochemistry way further and finding absolutely elegant pathways that could explain these diseases. The reason why these charts were published in peer-reviewed journals was because these group of scientists believe that these particular diseases would be predicted from GMOs and Roundup. And that's why they did the study, and that's what they found. So in that context, these are quite important.